Hey, what's going on everyone? This is iReviews back with another video and as you probably know by now, Apple has released iOS 16.2 to the public. With the release of a new software, of course, there will be new updates to the settings app as well and new settings that will be added to iOS. So in this video, I will show you guys 16 settings that you should change on your iOS 16.2 device. Some of them new settings that have been added with this update and some of them all the settings that you should take a look at and make sure you change immediately on your iPhone. All right, before we get started, I just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not yet subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And we're starting things off with live activities and lock screen widgets, which now have a new option under Face ID and Passcode. So when you go to Face ID and Passcode, you will have here allow access when locked. And you will have here now the option for lock screen widgets and live activities as well so basically what you're doing here is allowing access to all of these things even though your device might be locked so of course you don't want to do that especially with live activities so what i suggest you do is make sure you go ahead and turn off live activities and lock screen widgets here under face id and passcode you might have heard about a new feature that apple has added to ios 16.2 called advanced data protection this new feature allows you to encrypt end-to-end -end your data. Things like maybe backups, your notes, your photos, or things like reminders or your bookmarks. It's really, really important. But what is more important is that you set the account recovery. Now, these files that you encrypt have to be decrypted by you. You will have to have a recovery contact or the key because Apple is not responsible and they won't be able to actually decrypt your data. So you need to make sure before turning this on that you go to account recovery and make sure you add a recovery contact or you add the recovery key from here before turning on this new feature called advanced data protection. And while you're here under the iCloud settings, make sure you also turn on here iCloud data on the web. This will allow you to have access to your data when you open iCloud.com. And of course, you log in with your Apple ID. You can have access to your data on the web. Things like your mail, your contacts, your photos, notes, everything that you have on your iCloud, you can browse them on iCloud.com on the web, of course, as long as you have the option enabled here. Now this new feature is for people with the new iPhone 14 Pro or the 14 Pro Max. Now you can see how the lock screen looks on the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. The always on display always has the wallpaper in the background. But with iOS 16.2, you can just go to display and brightness and then go here to always on display and make sure you disable wallpaper. What this does is that it will just turn the screen dark Whenever you go to your lock screen to the always on display, you can see there is no wallpaper in the background. Now, some people might like having that wallpaper in the background, but enabling this new feature will actually save a ton of battery on your device. So that's a really great addition to iOS 16. So make sure you always have that turned on. Next up, we're moving to accessibility, and this is a feature for the newer iPhones as well, for the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max, basically for devices that have the always on display. So head on under accessibility and go to touch, and you will find here a setting called tap or swipe to wake. Now, what you do here by enabling this is that when your phone is on the always on display mode, you don't have to actually wake up the screen and then unlock your device you can simply swipe up with the phone being on the always on display and it will right away take you on your home screen now with the release of ios 16.2 apple has added a new option for live activities if you go to something like tv here and you go to live activities you will have now an option for more frequent updates now this is a new option that has been added to apps like sports apps and things like that maybe nba and the different things like that you're watching a game you want to be updated more frequently you go ahead and ena enable this feature but as you can see right here it says that it can drain the battery of your iphone faster so if you want to enable this then you will have to sacrifice battery life on your iphone what i suggest you do if you don't actually really need it make sure you go ahead and turn this off completely 
Here we have another new setting that has been added with iOS 16.2. Head on to Siri and search and then go to Siri responses. Here we'll find prefer silent responses. Now this is a great setting. This is what I suggest you use with Siri because even though you might ask Siri something, it will actually give you a silent response. But if you have your iPhone connected to your car or to your headphones and the screen is off, then it will give you spoken responses. This doesn't mean that it will always give you a silent response, just in most cases it will, so it's actually very, very practical. And here's another great setting under Siri and search. Head on to Siri and search and go to call hang up. Make sure you have this enabled. This allows you to just hang up a call using Siri. So whether you're on the speaker or you have your iPhone far from you and you want to just hang up the call, all you have to do is just say the hey word and then just say hang up the call and you're good to go. You can hang up the call without having your iPhone in your hand, without having to reach for that hang up button. Next up, we're moving to the App Store settings and here we have a great setting that is actually very, very useful. Even though it will work in the background, you won't notice it, but it's actually really good. It is called in-app content. Make sure you have this enabled. What this will do is that when you download an app on your device, it will automatically download the app in the uh, the content of the app in the background so the first time you launch the app everything will be ready for you so if there's an app that you download and it needs extra content this feature will make it download that in the background so whenever you open the app it's ready to go the next thing you should do is head on to your iCloud at the top of the settings app, go to your Apple ID, you will have your iCloud here and you will have this section called apps using iCloud. Make sure you tap on show all right there and you will see here all the apps that are storing data and that have access to your iCloud account. What I suggest you do is take a look at these apps. There might be apps that you don't want to actually have access to your iCloud or just save their files on your iCloud. If you're using the free version of iCloud with only five gigs, of course, these will take a lot of space. So you won't have space for other things. So take a look at these apps and turn off the ones that you don't need. And while you're on your iCloud account, make sure you go under passwords and security and you will have here a feature called automatic verification. Now what this will do is that it will bypass captures on the internet automatically for you. So you have seen sometimes when you go into a website, it will ask you to confirm that you're human or it will show you like different puzzles or just select photos with different things to actually verify that you're a human. Well, that is now over. You can enable this feature right here and it will do that for you automatically. New with iOS 16.2 are also security updates. Apple has actually done a few tests. They have released a couple of different security updates with the betas of iOS 16.2 and it seems to work really good. So from now on, you will most likely get security updates on your iPhone without having to actually update your iOS software. But what I suggest you do so you don't have to bother with those, just go ahead and go to settings general, then go to software update, automatic updates, and make sure you have enabled security responses and system files. So those will automatically be downloaded and also installed on your iPhone without you having to do anything. Next up, we're moving to emergency and SOS. Of course, really, really important. What I suggest you do here is make sure that you have call after severe crash enabled. Now this is a feature that Apple has added to the newer iPhones and now it got, it got much better with the latest updates. So make sure you have this enabled. You never know when you might need it. Hopefully you never do, but it's actually really, really important. Moving on under accessibility, go to touch, scroll all the way down here and you will find prevent lock to end call. How many times you have been on a phone call and you just press the side button here, it will end the call. Well, make sure you go ahead and enable this feature and then it won't allow that to happen. Even though you might lock your device, the call will be still going on so you don't have to make the call again or you don't just don't wanna hang up, of course, on people while you're talking. Make sure you have this enabled and you're good to go. Moving on to notes, head on to the notes settings and you will find here a section for password. Go ahead and choose here device passcode. This will allow you to use your device's passcode to lock the notes that you lock on the notes app. 
otherwise you will have to set a custom password and you might forget it because most of the time you will set different passwords for different nodes so that's really really important make sure you use device passcode and you're good to go you don't have to actually create a passcode every time you want to lock a different node and last but not least we're going to the mail settings go to mail and scroll all the way down go to undo send delay and right here we'll have a few options now this is a new feature that apple has added with ios 16 where you can undo a sent email but did you know that you can actually configure the time in which you can make that action so from 10 seconds to 30 you can even turn it off but i wouldn't do that so 30 seconds will be the time that you will have now to undo a sent email so that is it for this video guys i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like if you did subscribe for more ios 16.2 videos and i will see you on the next one